Hey guys, welcome to Homesteading Through Our Eyes. Today we are using the water cell, the water safe well water test. It's a do it yourself, results on the spot, you don't have to send it in, water test. So let's get to it. well water test. Uh, let's see what's inside. It checks for several different things. So let's check it out. We got a test for pesticides and lead. This is the bacteria test. This one you have to keep for 48 hours in between 70 and 90 degrees to get the results. So that one's kind of the only one you have to wait for. Uh, there's also a pesticide and lead test and that one you have to do into a vial um, and that one takes a little bit longer too. But besides that the other ones are really easy. There is a hardness test, pH test, chlorine test, a nitrate and nit nitrate, nitrate and nitrate test, the iron test, a copper test. Those are just little papers that you put into the water and you check. So we've been bringing our water every time we've been drinking here. Um, but now that we're going to be staying here, we want to check our water, make sure it's good to drink. Um, we're still probably put it through our Berkey anyway, but still we want to know what's in our water. The property came with a well already dug and we added our hand pump, simple pump. So it's time to check the water. So let's get doing that. So I went down and pumped our sample, put it into a nice jug. It looks pretty good, but we don't know what's lurking in there. So we're gonna find out. I poured some into a mug just to get an easier working area. I already ripped open the copper test strip and this one you just put into the water for 30 seconds, move it back and forth. I already did this one, so I'm just going to show you kind of what you're supposed to do. Uh, you take it out, you do a one shake, let it rest for two minutes. I have my cell phone here as my timer. Make sure you have a timer. I'm not sure how important it is, but it says to do it for two minutes, so that's what I'm doing. And then you check it with the colors that they gave you. So I already did this one. This one came out on the low end of the copper, which is between 0 and 0.5. And so I just kept track of it. So that way when we want to come back and do a test, we know what it tested at and we can do another one. And then back here, it tells you what the EPA maximum contaminant levels or guideline standards are. And it says for copper, below 1.3 parts per million, so we're only 0 to 0.5, so we're fine on the copper range. So we got one test done. Let's move on. We got an iron test to go. Get that out. All right, same thing with this one. I'm going to just put it right in. This one says for five seconds waving back and forth and then a two minute rest. So here we go. Putting it in, starting the timer. And there's my five seconds. One shake. And then it says wait two minutes. So I'll show you the results for that one. We'll move on to the nitrate nitrite. Carefully open it and take out test strips. Still got my timer going for the other one so I know. 
says to be careful. Didn't say that on the other one. Okay, got one. All right, my two minutes for the iron test is up, so I'm going to check that one now. And it didn't really change, so that's good. It's, I mean, a little bit more than the zero, but not even close to the point one. so we're looking good there. I'll write the results down for that one. And then move on to the nitrate nitrate test, which I got the test strip out here. And this one is a two second wave as well. This one has nitrate on the top and nitrate on the, closer to the handle. So we'll start my timer. Two seconds. That's it. That was quick. Take it out and one minute. I guess we'll put it like this. And wait. One minute. And we have a pH hardness chlorine test on here. Okay. Alright, so we got three on here. pH, then the total hardness, and then the chlorine. And then you read it here. Alright, the one minute's up for the nitrates. Let's check that. And uh, not seeing any pink colors. What do you think on that one? It's a weird green. Okay, looks good. All right, this one we're going to do for 15 seconds. Reset my timer. 15 seconds. Well, I gotta read it and make sure I know what I'm doing. Oops. This one you remove immediately. You look at it for 15 seconds. Ooh, interesting. So 15 seconds are up on the reading. It's looking a little bit like high on the pH a little bit. Right in between 120 and 250 on the hardness. Chlorine's good. Chlorine's at zero. So that's good. Alright. I'm going to write all that down and then see what I need to do for this pesticide one because it's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so now I'm going to be testing the lead pesticide test. It has test strip, the lead test strip, the pesticide test strip, a test vial, and a dropper pipette. So let's see what this is about. All right, that's just garbage. Here is our lead test and our pesticide test. They're going to go down with the arrows into the vial here. And you're going to take exactly two dropperfuls of your testing sample here. I got some new water. Not using the same water as I was before. So we got one. Two. That doesn't seem like very much. Okay. Just as long as it's in there. Okay. Swirl the vial gently for several seconds. 
Mm, I don't know why. Okay. Put it down where you're going to keep it, and it's going to stay there undisturbed for 10 minutes. So make sure you're not going to be coming back and jiggling this around. And place both test strips into the test vial with arrows pointing down. There's my pesticide. Here's my lead. Okay, keep them in there. Sorry. For 10 minutes, I'll get my timer going. And we'll let you know what the results are. All right, so I, the 10 minutes are up for the lead pesticide test, so let's check it out. You take them out. It says if the left line is darker than the right line, that you have negative results. So here's our pesticide. Uh, definitely darker on the left. You can see it on the right, but definitely darker on the, on the left, so that would be a negative result. So that's good. We have a lot of golf courses around, so I was a little worried about the pesticides. And the lead, yep, darker on the left than on the right, so that's a negative again. So, good results so far. We haven't checked the bacteria test. That test, you have to use this vial. Um, probably not going to show this one to you because this one we have to take somewhere else to a family member's house. It has to be kept between 70 and 90 degrees for 48 hours. And we're not keeping that consistency yet in the wood stove, in the yurt. Nor do we want to. Nor do we want to. That's way too hot. Uh, so this one, you put your sample in. You shake it up. Let it sit upright in 70 to 90 degrees for 48 hours. And then you will read your results. Purple color would be negative, yellow color would be a positive color. So let's hope this one is a negative for us and we'll have, besides having hard water, everything else is great. We're all done with the water well test kit and the results came back great. We just have to finish up with the bacteria test as we told you earlier. Um, if you're interested in that, we'll make another video later on, so check that out. Also, we did it ourselves um, for peace of mind. It's nice. If you really want to be extra, extra safe, you could send your water into a lab. Um, I think it usually costs between like $80 and $100 for a good, a good full test. Um, I think this was like 5 bucks, so 12 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. <laughs> Alright, this one was 30 bucks. I think we got it online, but I think you can find it at Walmart for cheaper. Anyway, um, <clears throat> just wanted to say that you could do it yourself and get pretty good results to keep you happy and get you going for now. So check out our other videos on everything else, and be sure to like and subscribe and share, and stay tuned because we'll be back with more. Thanks. Peace.